Welcome back to the episode of Unfiltered Convos and today we will be reviewing Vanderpump Rules premiere episode that just premiered tonight and I can say I'm really excited for this season. I'm enjoying the how this episode was shot. I enjoy the editing of the episode and everything. Um, I love the new intro that they had for this episode. I'll probably rate this premiere probably like an 8 out of 10 or 8.5 out of 10. Um, so we're going to start right now with the first scene. We had Ariana at our house. We had Katie. They, she came by the house. and. They were discussing their sandwich shop. As you know, Katie and Ariana are actually planning to open a sandwich shop. So they decided that they were going to go thrifting to get some stuff for the sandwich shop. We also found out that Tom is in New Zealand shooting a competition show, which I believe... can't remember the name of the show on the top of my head right now. And then we also see that they're living under the same roof. Um, I don't know if it was me, but... Tom's room seemed a bit more organized than Ariana's. Ariana's room seemed a bit all over the place. Like, I was expecting a bit more organization. But it just seems like everything in her room was just, like, thrown all over the place. So I don't know what that is about. We also then found out in the scene that Tom wants to buy Ariana out of the house, but she doesn't want to move because she doesn't want him to stay in the house. And I really don't see the reason why she cares if he wants to stay in the house or anything like girl just cut your losses and move on i don't see why it is that you want you don't want to give up or being bought out of the house because you don't want him to be living there it makes no sense because at one point you're saying that why should he stay why should you move but i'm sure like if it was the other way around where he you he was buying or you were buying his half out of the house, you would not want to be staying in that house. So I don't know what's the reason behind you don't want to move out of the house, but it's sounding a bit ridiculous to me at this point. We then move to the next scene where we had James and Ali as they were building some furniture for their house. He says that his feelings were hurt due to Sandoval, to Sandoval basically having an affair with his ex and apparently Sandoval hasn't reached out to him or anything like that so he is pretty much a bit confused as if probably Sandoval doesn't think that he has any feelings and the fact that they were friends and then this happened like I'm as expecting he's probably expecting some sort of remorse or anything <clears throat> we then move to the next scene we had Sheena and Brock at their house Sandoval also, Sandoval had a best friend that died and it seems as if that the group or Relshina really messaged him regarding the passing of his friend and she didn't get a response and then when she followed up with the message she found out that she was blocked. He blocked her on all her socials including their daughter's social media page. This point, Sheena, I really don't see why at this point you're really bothering because it was just three months ago you were literally on that same couch, closing the friendship, moving on. Everybody at the reunion handed him his ass, but then you're expecting him to actually respond to a message because he he had a passing of his friend. I don't see why you expected him to respond or surprised by the fact that he blocked you and everything and yeah it's sad that he blocked your daughter's page but at the end of the day i'm sure it's not your daughter actually managing the page it's you so i could see why he maybe thought that let me block her on this as well in in case you feel like you want to use that page as a way to reach out to him then they also found out in the scene that raquel is also extending her time in the medical facility we then moved to the next scene where we had Lala at her house. We found out that her mother is now living with her and she also is helping her raise her daughter, Ocean. She also hopes that her custody situation with Randall clears up soon. And also we have Randall also doesn't want to give Lala full custody because he's afraid that if she gets full custody, then that means she will have all rights to have her daughter on the show. But she doesn't really care about that. Like, she's glad that she's getting custody for, I think, other educational purposes and stuff. So she's quite fine with that. 
And then also, she also noticed that in order for her to enjoy her soft era and also be a good role model for her kids, she has to go through the emotions that she has in regards to the relationship with she and Randall because she's clearly not fully healed over that relationship. We then move to the next scene. We had James Kennedy. He met up with Tom Schwartz. Tom says the biggest fight he had with Sandoval was regarding the bar's name, which is a bit alarming. I would have thought that the biggest fight you had with him was regarding Scandoval. Like, I didn't think a name for a bar that would be the highlight or the biggest fight you ever had with him. We found out that as well, reservations went down and also some staff quit the bar due to Scandoval. We already saw that all over the media. We saw where persons were leaving fake reviews all because of what went down. Schwartz also then tells that Sandoval, after all the problems they have put him through, he told him that he'd make sure that he is with Raquel for the rest of their life because he pretty much blew up his friendships and the dynamic of the group. So if you're going to blow up your friendships and the dynamic of your circle, this person must be worth it for you to go through all of that and as we know current time now they're not even together so it's like you did all of this or you put all of this risk out there for not even a full proper year of this relationship like it was just like a couple months affair and that's all you got out of it like you did all of this this public hatred for nothing it's ridiculous we found out as well that James, as again, has stopped drinking, but he still smokes weed. And I don't know why he doesn't see that as an issue. You put down one addiction to probably sounds like you're taking up another addiction. Like, make it make sense. We then also found out that Ariana as well, she doesn't want to see Schwartz, which she rightfully has a right to because your house was, or your apartment was the place that they were allegedly meeting up and having their affair so you clearly knew about it and you're expecting her to still be friends with you and understand where you were coming from and that you told him to tell her and he didn't do anything then why didn't you say something like i don't get the mind process or your thought process as to why you think that she would still want to remain friends with you at this point we then have ariana meets up with sheena at the spa Ariana met Dan. She says that's now her current boyfriend. He's a bartender and also a professional trainer. She met him at her oldest friend's wedding and they hit it off since. And we all know currently they are actually dating. You know, he's from New York and she's in LA. So you know how that relationship may go. Sheena then says she doesn't believe that Ariana has really processed the situation with her and Tom. Rightfully so, because we see in the future scenes where you can see that she still had flashbacks and she got emotional about being in Tom Tom. Sheena also then says that she's not on alcohol because she was then diagnosed by her therapist for having OCD. So she's on medication. So she has been taking a break from drinking. And then also we have Ariana also stated that she did block Schwartz on social media and she doesn't really at this point see a friendship with him, rightfully so. Then we moved to the next scene where we had the gang arrived at Tom Tom. We had Ariana also ignoring Tom Schwartz as much as he's trying to build some sort of communication with her. She has no, she wants no parts of it. She then gets emotional about being at Tom Tom. Then we had some flashback scenes from their time there as a couple. And I must say the editing for this episode itself was top tier. Like, it was a good, good editing. Um, the flashbacks, the dramaticness, like a horror movie, like everything was literally like good editing. We then found out that Lala decided to speak to Lisa on the side. And then she says to Lisa that she she feels some way about the Raquel situation of it all. And I guess the last five minutes that was shown in the ending of the reunion last season where she says that if she pretty much loses Tom then she has nobody else and <clears throat> I'm trying to understand where was this level of thinking when everybody was pretty much being aggressive or going heavily on the two of them especially Raquel 
not condoning what she did I, we knew that was totally wrong there's no need for her she shouldn't have done that the fact that these persons consider her friend even close to her than friend and you did something like that really is alarming but all of this remorse that everybody is now feeling and i'm like where was this a couple months ago you guys didn't have a problem months on being on a podcast sharing your details making money off of this and creating merch and now all of a sudden that the cameras are rolling like we feel remorse we need to reach out you're concerned you understand where she's coming from like when this happened immediately yes everybody was rightfully angry but you la la because you are the one pretty much right now speaking up you did not see where this relates to you when persons were calling you a mistress we even had persons saying that how is someone like Lala and Sheena so vocal about this when they themselves have done stuff not same as that, but they were practically mistresses. So what gives you the right to feel as if like you are now, you know what is best and what is wrong and et cetera, et cetera. So it's really weird that now that cameras are back up now, all of a sudden you feel remorse and you want to reach out. Like, I'm not sure if you saw back yourself on TV and you're like, you didn't like the way you came at her. Or I'm not sure if you saw the comments on social media and you're like, yeah, I think I went too far. So now you're trying to save whatever it is. We then get Katie says that she hopes that she and Sheena can get back to where they were and she wants to ensure she can trust Sheena with the small things because as you know they had a tiff last season they kind of reconciled because of the old scandal of it all and trying to be there for Ariana but we see where the two of them were not seen eye to eye and of course little stuff that Sheena was aware of with her friendship with Katie she kind of threw it back up in her face so I guess she has a little trust in issues there and then we got this ass dramatic scene with Lala going outside, then leaving some voice notes for Raquel. And this is where I'm talking about again, like, girl, what are you doing? Like, it's one thing if you did this, like, maybe a couple months before the cameras picked up. I know it was three months after you guys started filming again, but it was really okay if you kind of did that. But during those three months or time when cameras were now down and it was before the new season, you guys had no issues being on social and sharing your thoughts and making merch and going on each other's podcasts and each week. So it's so funny now that the cameras are back. It's like we all feel bad. We then move to the next scene. We had Tom Schwartz's apartment. We have Katie stop by. He says to Katie that um, he misses his friendship with Ariana. Katie then asks him why doesn't he reach out. He said he's blocked, which, okay. But he wants Katie to pretty much to help mend or have a sit to organize or see where he and Ariana can have a sit down to discuss, I guess, everything that happened and maybe try to reconcile that friendship, which we'll see where that goes. The next scene we had, no, they had a girls' night out. So we had Sheena, Lala, and Katie, and Ariana, they met up. We then, Katie tells Ariana that Schwartz misses her. She doesn't care. We then have Ariana wanted as well to get closer to, uh, said she wanted to get closer to Katie, but because of, you know, Sandoval and Katie could not see eye to eye, and the fact that they were in a relationship, it was a bit hard for her to get closer to Katie because Sandoval kept telling her to be very careful. Then we also have Lala says that she wonders with Ariana as well with their friendship. Like she doesn't know if she really is friends with Ariana or if she's just tolerating her at this point. And that's when Ariana pretty much apologized because we know Ariana tends to have a wall up, rightfully so. But sometimes her wall tends to block people from thinking or knowing what she's thinking. So you don't know if she's really for you or she's just as she lala said thus tolerating her then lala then tells the group that she did send a voice note to raquel which shocks everyone at the table because they don't understand the reasoning behind all of a sudden now you want to send a voice message to her she's trying to tie her situation with randall 
and how she felt to the situation with Raquel, which Katie's trying to let her know it's not the it's not the same thing. And then Ariana rightfully brought up a point where when it was her situation with Randall, she wanted nobody to have any parts with them. She was all full force, pretty much. So it's kind of hypocritical now because if Ariana as well was supposed to reach out to one of Randall's mistresses, I'm sure it would not go over well. So it's kind of very hypocritical now you're trying to put yourself in a situation and trying to tie to you as to the reason why you reached out to her which to me is did not make any sense then we also saw where sheena that says she was also a champion for raquel and sheena like we understand that you got a restraining order we understand that all of this stuff happened to you but this is not about you and i realized in a couple of scenes in this episode you kept making this thing about you it's not about you so Yes, you were friends with him. Yes, you were friends with her. But at this moment, just give it some ease. Not make yourself a part of the situation and just be there for your friend. Like, we don't need to know, yes, she gave you a restraining order and yes, you felt away and yes, you're worried about if Brock would do the same and whatever happened. Just be there for your friend. If the least you can do, just be there for your friend. We don't need to hear you involving yourself in this. But then we got the last scene where we found out now Tom has now returned from New Zealand and we'll see next week what now drama they come with. But I can say that I'm really excited for this season. It started off with a good premiere episode. I am waiting next week to see what brings, what happens next week. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below on your thoughts on tonight's premiere episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Bye!